What is up guys, this is Angus Jefferson 15 and today I'm going to do a full review of the HTC One S. So let's jump straight into it, let's look at the design of the HTC One S design. Body, it has an extremely thin design, it has a nice rubber edge with extremely nice front panel glass. All of it is glass on the front so there's no buttons at all. Obviously on the side of the unit there are buttons but nothing on the front which is a nice touch because it makes it look a lot thinner and nicer and there's no physical buttons on the front that can be used. So at the top there's the uh, sleep or wake button, there's uh, the uh, USB connector and on the side on the bottom there is only a speaker, it's very hard to see because of the black and there is the headphone jack. So as you can see there's the Beats Audio logo and that is about it for the design. Overall I would give it a 4 out of 5 as it is probably one of the nicest designs I've ever seen. In my opinion I would probably say it's nicer than the iPhone 5, the Samsung Galaxy S3, the Nokia Lumia 800. So let's uh, boot this thing up. As you can see there's the HTC One logo uh, starting up. It starts up in about 10 seconds which is quite uh, quick because it's running on O2 it does take a little bit longer because it has to, has to show the logo. So as you can see there, there is the start screen and the HTC One logo. So there is the start screen, the uh, lock screen more like, and there is the really nice uh, front panel design. This is running Android Ice Cream Sandwich 4.1.1. So it is not running Jelly Bean, but it's extremely uh, nice to run as it's sleek and it is fast. For a second I did for, uh, think it was a little bit laggy, but it wasn't. It was just the operating system. So this is a very uh, powerful machine as it has a lot of amazing specs in this, even though the design is extremely thin. So as you can see, the operating system is running very fluid on this and you'll also see that there is a lot of preloaded apps I've used this phone for quite a while so there are a few amounts of apps but most of them on the lock screen so you can definitely tell uh, HTC and Android have partnered up together and put in a lot of apps so let's jump straight into the camera from the uh, lock screen it's very easy to access um, what I really like about the HTC One S is if you leave the camera on it will stay running on where for example on the iPhone 5 if you leave it on then you have to uh, open the lock screen and then use it from there. There is a quick button but on this as soon as you open the lock screen you don't even have, uh, have to do anything it just jumps straight, uh, straight into the app which is a really really nice feature so as you can tell the camera for this is actually incredibly good the color saturation is nice the picture quality isn't so good it's just the center is very well made by HTC and what I really like about it is you can take several shots at once and you can choose the best photo, I'll show that in a minute. So once I've taken my photo, I can click on best shot. As I've taken loads of different shots, it will automatically pick which one was the best shot. And you can click yes and it will save it in your gallery. Now you can easily view that as there is a icon to view all your recent photos which is another nice feature this is also featured on iOS and a lot of other operating systems but it's a nice touch as it doesn't get in the way but it is very easy to access now another really really good feature about the camera and the operating system on the HTC One S is the features the amount of options and customization on this is absolutely incredible there is so many different things you can do with this because Android have put a lot of effort into making a good operating system especially for uh, people who want to take good quality photos and who people who want to have fun with the camera so they can do loads and loads of different things on this camera I would probably say there's more options and customization on this than on my original Panasonic SLR which is quite amazing because 
it just shows uh, Android have put a lot of effort into this and they are allowing you to do loads of different uh, varieties and I think that's really nice because some people complain that it gets complicated but for me it's absolutely brilliant so as you can see there that is the front facing VGA camera it's not that good it's definitely good enough for Skype calls and any calls that you want to use the front facing camera or take pictures it's definitely good enough but I would like HTC to add this obviously they have done this in the HTC One X and a lot of the newest phones but I would have liked to see it so let's look back at the design you can definitely tell that it is very thin from the perspective at the front so back to the software the video quality on this is actually really good because the sensor allows you to take really good quality photos and also video at the same uh, same time as uh, HTC advertised a lot about the features that you can do so you can uh, take a picture while videoing now this is obviously a feature on the iPhone as well but HTC got there first and that uh, makes them the better one in the competition of the market because it just shows that they're trying to push forward and they're trying to make their camera as good as they can just from an operating system so as soon as you tap play or go straight into the video you can pause play rewind go in slow motion and also you have all the other options on the side now another nice feature um, about the camera is the playback mode it's actually really simple and easy to use I would probably say it's nicer than Android uh, Jelly Bean or iOS 6 because it's really simple it's got loads of options however the only thing I didn't like about it is that the a slider can sometimes be really hard to use as I've got quite fat fingers so for me it's kind of hard to use I can't even uh, slide the brightness at some, sometimes I can but usually I can't which is something I think HTC and Android need to look at now this is Android's problem however HTC should know this because it's customized on HTC phones so they do need to sort this out in Jelly Bean as you can see you have all the options, you can go in full screen mode, you can use capture mode, you have the beats audio mode, you have trim mode, you have all the different options which is nice because it means if you want to edit the video while it's on your phone you have all the other options so you can also select player, share and also use the selected player so as you'll be able to tell from the 1080p footage that the HTC One can record it is fairly good I think the quality is actually really good the colors are not so good because I'm videoing it in quite bright light but overall it's definitely a brilliant camera for videoing and taking pictures so when you type on the HTC One S you have the voice to use your fingers or also use your voice which is a nice touch to the phone so the reason it's kind of slow on this is because I am using 3G so the internet speed is going to be quite slow because internet is probably something I use nearly every day it's going to carry on like this and not going to run I'm probably not going to test this out I will come back I will probably try it on Wi-Fi because I really want to show you what the internet capabilities are on this phone because sometimes it can actually be really nice so if that's going to work hopefully I can show you it so let's go back to that in a minute so on the HTC One S there are a variety of apps as I said before and some some of them can be quite good but most of the time it's quite annoying because it can restrict the storage now the internal storage for this phone is 16 gigabytes now that is more than enough for uh, custom apps or default apps but in a way it's kind of annoying because I don't really want these apps in my opinion I reckon that Android should sort this out because it's quite a lot of stuff that I really don't need or want most of it's just social networking sites and little widgets which can 
help the phone in some ways, but most of the time I've never actually used them. Most of them I don't even know what to use or how to use it. So let's go on to the settings of this phone. What is really good about Android is the customization, uh, which is what puts them ahead of iOS. Now, another really good feature is that there are so many different options. Now, as I said before, people don't really like this, but for me, I really like having a lot of options because I know that I can customize my phone to whatever I like. There are so many different options. Um, another really good one is the battery. It shows you exactly what the percentage is. It shows you how to say battery. For example, you can turn off vibration or vibration on or off, which can make big differences. It can show you what apps are using the most battery and what apps are using the least battery. And there are so many different ones. So, for example, it's the same with RAM. It shows which one is taking up the most storage um, on this, which is really good because if there's an app running and you don't know it's taken up a lot of RAM on your phone, you can delete it or stop it running, which is really good because it can speed up your phone a lot. So I'm not really surprised as the speeds are exceptional on this as it's running a 1.5 gigahertz processor with 1 gig RAM. So that's more than enough for heavy users to use this phone. In my opinion, I would say the design of everything on Android, including the settings, are absolutely exceptionally good because people say that the iOS simplicity is really good and that's what people want, but I think that it just puts puts them ahead of Apple as the, as Google and HTC and Samsung are trying their best to make the operating system as good as they can, while Apple are not even changing their operating system and just worrying about the phone. Now because of that I probably think Google will overtake Apple as several of their features on their operating system are already going ahead. In my opinion I would definitely say that the App Store Google Play is better than the App Store on iOS as there's already a lot more apps, they're cheaper and you can find a lot more widgets as a lot more people want to design apps for Android where iOS is only available for one phone which is the iPhone 5. So I've just turned on Wi-Fi and the internet speed has already increased quite a lot because I want to show you the capability so as you can see the video footage is running smoothly I don't see any lag, the picture quality is good the layout is good, it's quite simple. Unfortunately, there isn't a full screen mode. Uh, even though you are in full screen, you can't go back to minimize mode. If you want to, you have to press the back button. Now, that's not too much of an issue, but it would be nice to see that. So, this is my full review on the HTC One S phone. If you enjoyed this review, please click the thumbs up button as it will definitely be appreciated and thank you very much for watching